How's everybody doing? I apologize for really rambling yesterday. I felt like I really got off track with that Tuesday study, that 35 minute study. And I guess I just sort of um to today and we do move to Madden. I guess I just showed how I go about looking at stuff, but uh it got no thumbs up for sure. Uh high glow. I go 66 definitely gave some love or comment. So, okay. Thank you, my dear. Sorry. I dragged on with that study. Um, yeah, but thank you for the support for sure. Hi glow. So let's get on with Matthew 20 verses seven through seven. One column at a time out of my old dad's King James Bible. We're in column three as the columns need to be synced up so I don't get confused. And I have a little spreadsheet. Like tomorrow I'll be in the fourth column on page 1431 and 1297 on March 21st. So that's just kind of how it works. Simple. Easy peasy, as they say. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them. Now, we read all of this yesterday. So, that's on me, my fault. Uh, because no man hath hired us, he saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard. And yesterday's study, by the way, will I will detail it. I'm not going to re-detail it today. Hopefully, you're watching these in order anyway. Um. They say unto him, because no man have hired us, he say unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So he told the first group, uh, I'm going to give you this wage for your day's work. And then throughout the rest of the day, he's hiring others, midday, late day. They're all going to end up getting the same pay because we all get the same salvation. Some live a life as a sheep more torturous, more, more tribulation. And then some receive a lot less tribulation. We all through much tribulation enter the kingdom. So it's all registered as much. Now, somebody's much is more than somebody else's much. And what the Lord would say is, don't complain because you were tortured when this other person was not tortured. Just be happy that you're in my movie <laughs> where the script was written before the earth was even formed. Just be uh, satisfied with the fact that you are in my movie as a sheep. That should be sufficient. They say unto him, because no man have hired us, he saith unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from last to first. Last means the ones that were hired last, I'm assuming. And when they came that they were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny, which was the same of those that worked the entire day. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, these last have wrought, but just they just worked one hour. And they made the same thing we made. Kind of like I joked yesterday about, you know, salary. <laughs> those, those on salary versus hourly. But he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me a penny? And, you know, when we come into the calling by the Holy Spirit, we don't barter with the Lord and say, thank you for this calling in truth and pulling me out of the world. But I just want to make sure I'm not going to receive a whole lot of tribulation. Uh, I want to I, I start negotiating. 
the amount of tribulation. No sheep does that. No sheep does that. I do think Iran did. did uh, we agree that you would be satisfied with being a sheep. You agree with me for a penny. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. And I, I, I equate that as salvation. You're all agreed. You are all happy to be sheep. Look, I don't know if that's the interpretation, but it's the way I see it to at least help y'all understand tribulation. Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto the last as even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. And when, as we said yesterday, the many that are called are those that are called by humans. That's the, that's the call from man. Doesn't say all are called, doesn't even say most are called. So you can throw out the calling from the Holy Spirit to the world, which is non existent, or to the sheep. Because we went over yesterday that all that are called are saved by the Holy Spirit because they're all predestinated. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and who he called, he also justified, and who he justified, he also glorified. So if you're called by the Holy Spirit, you are predestinated, you'll go through the justification, sanctification, repentant process, and you will receive your glorified body, 100% of them. Now, this is the call of man. That's also confusing when they talk about doing God's will. Well, everybody does God's will. So there's two types of God's will. The goats are also doing God's will <laughs> uh, because he's willed everything. He's ordained the end from the beginning. Everything is set. The goats were not written in the book of life at the foundation of the world. The sheep were chosen before the foundation of the world. That is Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, along with Revelation 17, 8, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. So everything's established. So they're all doing what God has willed for them. But then there's also that doing God's will. Which are what sheep do. That's in the good sense. In the sheeply sense of the salvation sense. So this, this calling is a different type of calling like God's will. There's two, there's two way goes here. Which is why we do one column at a time because... The Bible is so layered, it's so exhaustive, it's so difficult to understand. And um, that's why we teach in little chunks. So many are called, and many is just more than a few, but few are chosen. So many get the call from man. They hear the truth from sheep. But only a few are chosen to actually understand it and receive it. Those that do not properly receive it are the goats that then give you tribulation. And Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, comma, and we'll continue with verse 18 tomorrow, good Lord willing. Daniel 2, can, along with Nebuchadnezzar's dream and his big threat, that your houses will be made a dunghill if you do not, do not give me the dream and the interpretation. They answered again and said, let the king tell the servants. So come on, king, tell us your dream, and we will then show you the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. So he's going to repeat himself. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. In other words, you're going to make something up. You have no divine intercession. 
to give me the interpretation of the dream if you cannot tell me the dream. So he's saying, if you can't tap into the supernatural world to properly give me, you can't give me the proper interpretation if, if, the, if the supernatural world you're communing with doesn't also tell you the dream itself. He's saying, channel those spirits and give me both. Because if the spirits are real that you're channeling, you're going to be able to give me both. And of course, Daniel does because he's it's given to him by the Holy Spirit. I don't mean to do a spoiler alert here. <laughs> and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation there. Anyway, did I skip something? Lying in corrupt words before me till the time be changed. He's talking about wasting time and... Therefore, tell me the dream. By the way, that's why time, times, and half of dividing time could just mean a day. Because that definition of time, people will say, well, it means a year. No, it doesn't necessarily mean a year. It means a day or a year. Time, time, and half of a dividing of time. I'm talking about the end times. And that's why I tell you it goes from three and a half years, the Great Tribulation, to three and a half days. Sorry if I went off track and confused you. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I shall know. I need to put that in notes for my book. I don't think I have that in the second book. Yeah, and also it's time, times, and half of dividing a time. So the times is two years, So, but it's also two days. And you look up the definition. So I need to make sure I put that in the book to help with matters of understanding. But Jesus said he cuts... You know, he would cut those days short, and the only days mentioned are the three and a half years. So if they're cut short, to what extent? Well, the two witnesses, three and a half days. But it's still a time times and half of a dividing a time, so it's a it's a match in that prophecy. Prepare cup times be changed, therefore tell me the dream. And I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. So he's making them prove it. The only way he would believe that the interpretation is correct if they also can tell him the dream. And the dream was hidden from him. It was gone from him. It was just very disturbing. And he wants to know what it was. The Chaldeans answer before the king. That's all the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans combined. And he said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter because they're channeling spirits. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing of any magician, astrologer, or Chaldean. And this will prove to you that it's done through their fallen angel world, but they're literally saying they really can't channel these demonic spirits known as gods. And it's a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Well, so I'm telling you that Nebuchadnezzar is expecting them to channel the demonic realm. It's what they were doing anyway, whether they knew what they were doing or not. Uh the way these astrologers, Chaldeans, magicians, of course, they're dealing in magic. They're dealing with sorcery. They're dealing with connecting with demonic spirits. But I guess what they're saying is we don't have the ability. No man has ever been able to go that deep in the spirit world. Something that deep is only with them. And see, and Daniel, of course, then will go and require it of the Holy Spirit, of God. And that's God uh, flexing on them to show them um, his might, his power. For this cause, the king was angry and furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Now, Daniel would be lumped into that. But Daniel will make sure... <laughs> that he gets to the king before everybody's execution. It's funny that Daniel saves the lives of all these magicians and astrologers also. Hilarious. 
For this cause, the king was angry and furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And a decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with the counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay all these wise men of Babylon. Semicolon, and we will get to the rest tomorrow. Glad you're all here. I love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.